Hey guys, Stanford here from the Phone Robotics Network and welcome back to another episode of Phonalysis and today we're going to be taking a look at Pacific Northwest District Championship Finals Match number one. In this match we have two incredibly strong alliances on either side of the field and this match could be a preview of what we see at the championship level of play here for Reefscape. These two alliances also play their cards when it comes to algae in an extremely interesting way that I think is also worth taking a look at. So stay tuned for a very close look at this very interesting district championship finals match in this episode of Phonalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. All right, folks, so as we get into this match, um, there might be something that looks a little bit confusing um, to those who kind of don't know what happened here at the district championship. So I kind of want to give some context as to um, why you might be seeing what you're seeing. So you are seeing Alliance 3 down here and seeing 2910 right there um that might confuse some people so i kind of want to give some context as to why we're seeing what teams um we're seeing on the field right now so um both 2910 and 1778 um, would actually decline the number one seed at the pacific northwest district championship so they would actually be split up these two teams were uh, the two best teams there so now they were actually going to be on opposite sides of the field um basically no matter what happened so that was kind of an interesting thing that ended up uh creating this kind of chaos um, and creating this kind of uh, much closer than anyone expected uh, final series. I um, also want to just introduce the other teams here. So obviously we got 2910 um, over here on the Red Alliance side. Um, and then they would go ahead and pick up Team 2930 uh, Sonic Squirrels as their first pick and uh, 7034 to be determined um, as their second pick. Meanwhile, on the Blue Alliance side, um, we've got 1778 who are kind of hiding behind the reef over here. Um, chill out as the captain. Um, they've also, they, they picked up... Um, 9450 um, Velocity Raptors, uh, who actually set a world record a uh, couple, uh, I think the previous day um, for this at the Pacific Northwest District Championship. So an incredibly strong pick uh, from them from uh, Chill Out. And then they would go ahead and pick up uh, Team 948 and RG as their second pick. So that's kind of who we've got here. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of go through autonomous and see how it goes. Um, it's gonna go the way of red, um, I think as basically everyone expected. I do think it is interesting the autonomous that 2910 um, runs and that they ran through most of the playoff run. Um, so they score on entirely the front face of the reef. So you can see 2910, um, if we back up a little bit here, um, they only ever score on the front face of the reef. And then uh, as Teleop starts, they kind of move away from there. So what they do is they score two on L4 first and then two on L3 right afterwards. Um, so this kind of gets out of the way out of the um, a lot of the common autonomous paths that you see in this game. So I think it's a very kind of creative strategy from them. Um, you're going to be seeing that quite a bit. That's kind of a theme for this Red Alliance is, is 2910 basically doing exactly what they need to be doing to fill in the alliance's gaps and basically just um, complete, like round out this alliance in an extremely uh, interesting way, an extremely effective way as well. Um, so you're gonna be seeing as Teleop starts, um, first of all, Red Alliance already has a big advantage. Um, you're gonna be seeing a big algae focus on either side of the field. So 2910, who you can actually see picking an algae up off the reef right now, um, are gonna be focused entirely, entirely on algae for basically the entire match. Um, if, if I recall correctly, I believe they only score one or two coral in Teleop, which is kind of crazy um, considering the caliber of team the 2910 is. Um, but that just basically means that their two alliance partners are good enough to fill the reef. So we're kind of starting to see at this level um, that, that they're filling the reef is very much a on the cards with just your first pick and your second pick. Um, so I think algae is a big part of this. And another thing is that uh, both 2910 and 9450, who are in kind of an interesting spot right now, um, can both pick up algae off the ground. So they wanna minimize um, having that. 9450 are about to attempt to steal this algae 
um, on the Red Alliance Reef. It's not going to go well for them. They're going to get caught stealing right there. And um, you can see flags going up. Yeah, it didn't work out too well for them. Um, they get caught stealing and it kind of just, they give up and continue to work on algae um, on their side of the field. So we're, we're not that far in Teleop right now. Um, one minute and 52 seconds. And you can already see like the, the net action that's kind of gone up over here. Um, on the Red Alliance side, 2910 is the only one going up to the net. Uh, meanwhile, 1778, um, who you can see are going up here, they're kind of doing the more uh, traditional-ish uh, to this kind of part of the season um, super cycle, which is scoring coral and then grabbing the algae that's like right there and going up to the net. Um, that's kind of covering 9450, who it seems went to go steal and are a little bit shaken by that right now. Um, but again, th this part of the match is kind of all about algae. Um, yes, there's coral happening in the background. So on, on the Red Alliance side, 7034 are basically just going to pretend that algae doesn't exist at all. And they're just going to cycle back and forth on this um, face of the reef. 2930 are going to be very similar in that regard. They're going to do a little bit of dealgification. Um, but basically, this Red Alliance is just going to be pretending like Coral is the only thing that's part of this game. They're basically going to be pretending um, like it's a regional or district event, you know, uh, finals match in like week two, week two, uh, and just kind of pretending algae isn't there. Uh, meanwhile, twenty nine ten is going to be going around and scoring as much algae as possible. Um, so you're seeing that on both sides of the field. Um, the Blue Alliance does have two robots going for algae which is definitely putting them at a big disadvantage right now. You can see that the Red Alliance has a big coral advantage um, already compared to the um, compared to the Blue Alliance um, because they've been kind of distracting themselves a little bit by going up for um, algae. But again, 2910 going up to the net, um, entirely focused on algae. Now here, here's where things get interesting. Um, the Blue Alliance is very clearly trying to stop any algae from ending up on the ground whatsoever. Um, you can see that with 1778 picking up algae off the reef. You can see that with 9450 also picking up algae off the reef. Um, they are most likely trying to stop 2910 from doing something they're going to try to do later this match with this algae over here on the Blue Alliance side. Um, 2910, very, very effective ground intake for algae. So they want to really try to stop 2910 from stealing algae. They're going to go try to do it, um, and you're going to see what that kind of looks like in a second. But the Blue Alliance is very clearly trying to stop coral from, or algae from ending up on the ground, um, which kind of goes against them a little bit here. You can see that they have a big coral disadvantage because they've kind of been clogging themselves up with that. Um, 2910 go up for a, yeah one of their few teleop coral right there as they um, knock an algae off the reef. Um, meanwhile, speaking of knocking algae off the reef, the, the Red Alliance doesn't attempt to cover that. Um, 2930 and uh, 7034 as well, um, they just knock an algae off the reef with impunity, even though 9450 um, actually can pick it up off the ground as well. So they're not distracting themselves by by trying to kind of overcomplicate things and um, stop algae from ending up on the ground. They just let it happen and they can kind of catch 9450 stealing if they need to. Um, but even then, they're saving so much time by not worrying about it that it's kind of proving to be very effective. And it kind of makes for a uh, easier cycle for 2910 because they don't have to navigate around their partners to get to the reef that has the algae on it. So now the Red Alliance side is completely clear of algae. Um, 2910 are gonna put some coral on L1 and then you're gonna see them make a beeline across this field to try to pick up this algae that's on top of the lollipop over here. Um, so this again is kind of we're starting to see the algae stealing start to happen we saw it at other district championships um these two alliances know that algae is a big part of this game and is a lot you know a lot of um, what makes the difference between uh alliances you know we're starting to see a lot of teams fill up the reef relatively quickly in fact now that the blue alliance is actually stopped focusing on algae they've tied up the number of coral they're in different places but they've actually tied up the number of coral scored um, they're still down because of autonomous and again where these coral are scored but um, 
the moment they stopped running that strategy of trying to stop algae from ending up on the ground, they catch up quite a bit. And you can see them start to do that as uh, Teleop kind of gets under a minute here. Um, 2910 go and knock off that algae, but it bounces around. Um, and it bounces around to the point where they kind of ignore it and just kind of go back. So it's really interesting to see them kind of not commit and not follow through. Um, I think it's kind of smart from their part. Again, their driver station is right here. So this area of the field is particularly hard to see for them. So I get it. Uh, but it's interesting to see them kind of not follow through on it. Um, so now they're just going to focus on L1 um, because the Red Alliance is about to, um, to finish off um, two, three, and four. The Blue Alliance still uh, is missing quite a few on L2, um, but in general, like these two alliances were more than good enough um, to fill up L3 and L4, and, and usually L2 as well. Um, so that again, that's why algae was such a big part of the early part of the, this match, was because it's, it's the difference maker, because it's zero sum, so if you can pick up an algae, um, that means that they can't. So not only is it four points for you, it's four points you're deni denying them. So that's an eight point differential. Um, but it's also the difference maker because we're running out of places to score on this reef. Yes, L1 is going to come into play um, at that point, but you can realistically, we've seen only get so much going on inside of that reef without it getting really clogged and really kind of annoying. Um, also, and kind of a funny thing, uh, that algae that 2910 went all the way over here to go grab, it actually managed to bounce to their side of the field and they went and grabbed it anyway. So you can't stop 2910 um, even, even if you wanted to. So in-game kind of approaches. Um, so what's interesting here is 1778, who are on the Blue Alliance, um, they do not climb. Um, and haven't climbed for the entire season. So they're actually going to continue cycling on um, L1. Thing is, they, they've run out of enough places to score that they can't possibly score enough points um, to try to kind of make up for that. So they know they're going to be down in that regard. Um, the, this climb, unfortunately, doesn't count for 948 either, so that kind of puts the Blue Alliance at an even further disadvantage. Um, but back to 1778, um, they're going to try an even crazier strategy in finals match number two, uh, where they're actually going to go through their cages and attempt to defend this Red Alliance from climbing. Um, like kind of 2022 style, we kind of saw that a little bit um, in, in, in that year. But yeah, it, it doesn't work either. Um, and they actually pick up a... I'm not sure if it was deserved... Um, Contact foul there as well. Um, but yeah, so end game again, it, this was kind of dominance on the Red Alliance's part in this match. Um, you know, 233, 214. This, these are still two insane scores on the other side of the field. And this is why I think this might be a preview of Championship Little Play, because either of these scores would be good enough, more than good enough to win a district event or a regional uh, or most regionals. So, like, Again, this is why I think this could be a preview of what championship looks like because these are all extremely capable offensive robots, lots of ground and takes. Um, and so, again, we see um, algae also being the key difference maker between alliances as well. So what do you guys think this game will look like at the championship level? Do you think we'll see defense start to come back um, at high levels of play? Let me know what you guys think inside of the comments. Obviously, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the Fun Robotics Network YouTube channel. I've been Stanford. Thank you for watching this episode of Fundalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.